A friend of my wife asked if I could make a gavel for his wife as gimmick for ending internal debates. I of course said yes. I'm happy to contribute to domestic peace. So to make the gavel, I found this uh, piece of wood in my shed that I'm going to make it from. And I'm just going to make it straight on one, one side before I cut it on the bandsaw. I don't know why, but it's just satisfying to make these straight edges. I just love it, just feeling it. There we go, that's one uh, straight edge. Now let's uh, go and cut the pieces we need on the bandsaw. And my bandsaw. One of the tools I would really like to upgrade. It really has a hard time with hardwoods, especially of this size. So it took some sawing and some uh, some resawing, but uh, we have a stick for a handle. I actually made two blocks just if I'm gonna mess it up, but uh, there's two blocks for the for the head itself. Actually, really liking the the texture of this wood, and there's also two blocks for the wood in case I mess that up. So uh, so onto the lathe to uh, to do all the pieces. My only problem is that this is what is left of my lathe because uh, I had some issues with the motor not rotating straight so it, I couldn't really turn on it. But uh, I figured out that I could use it as a, as a sanding disc instead. So that's what I'm using it for now. So I actually don't have a lathe currently but I'm lucky that my Father-in-law has one, so I'm gonna visit him and use his to make the gavel. So here we are in my father-in-law's shop and his lathe. So I'm just been setting it up, uh, figuring out how to do that. I've started with a uh, with a block for the head, and I'm gonna start by turning it around first. I just want to start by saying I am by no means a turning expert, so don't look to me for tips or tricks. I don't really turn that often, especially now where my own lathe is broken. But I must say I really enjoy it when I get around to it. Shaping wood this way is really satisfying. So you can say that turning is kind of a sin place for me. You can see that I from time to time reference a piece of paper. I had the shapes drawn up ahead of time to be a bit prepared on the hills and valleys of the different pieces. I just used a simple checkered sketching pad to make it easier to make especially the two sides of the gavel head symmetrical. I've added a small picture of each of the pieces if you wanted to get some inspiration to your own gavel. And you can see on this, this two kind of boxes is one centimeter. I actually lied when I said no tips or tricks, but sometimes you can see me holding the the turning iron on top of the wood to see if I actually turn totally round because it's going to jump if there's still some if it's not totally round yet. So that's one trick at least. This is me turning the uh, the the bottom gavel. As you can see, there's uh, an illustration here of the outlay I was kind of going for. You can do your own if you want to. Moving on to the handle itself, I think that was actually one of the hardest parts for me to do. Um, it's long and it's making those straight lines when you're turning, I think that's quite difficult. I'm still trying to master the uh, the straight iron because you can do some nasty cutouts if you uh, if it if it ca catches uh, one end. But uh, I actually managed to do this one without it catching anywhere. But uh, 
I'm still practicing on that one. I'm actually getting chips from it. You can see I'm more shaving than I'm doing chips, but uh, I managed to do okay, I think. Maybe just a small comment on sanding, it is so much easier on the lathe. Alright, so we are back in my own shop and uh, we got these three pieces made. That's the head. I'm gonna come a bit closer. Uh, we got the head made for the hammer with the gavel. We got the, the handle, which this part is going to go into the head. And we got the block to, uh, to hit on. So I still need some uh, sanding on this one, uh, top and bottom. And then I need to, uh, to drill the hole in the headpiece and uh, glue this in and put some finish on it. I got these nice sanding pads a while back that I can mount on my uh, drill and it actually creates this kind of rotating surface that I can use and it's, it's kind of soft so it's actually nice to be sanding these surfaces especially this one that actually needs to be a bit recessed on the bottom so it actually doesn't touch the table and wobble. Uh, but as you can see just around this, this is why I wear a respirator. <laughs> It's almost like it's snowing in my shop. So I need to drill a hole in this and uh, the hit really needs to be in the center. So um, I'm gonna try to figure out how to do that. So I really wanted to create something that it could lie still in while I'm drilling and it's kind of hard since it's round. But I figured I would take a piece of scrap wood and kind of cut a small groove in it so it could uh, could lie in there and uh, this is what I'm doing here trying to cut that groove into a piece of scrap wood so I can use that for uh, for holding it steady while I'm drilling so this is my drill setup as you can see, I was really worried that the, the first time I would put the drill down into it, it would just fling around my shop. So I put a lot of tape on both sides of the hole I was drilling to kind of make sure that it didn't shift anywhere. And I was really careful with the drill, just taking small bites at a time. Also to not go through it, because we were really sad to come out on the other end with the drill. So I was really doing this in very, very small uh, sections to make sure that the the drill didn't go too far. So there we go. That's the hole for the for the handle. It's fairly snug. So it's a, a matter of gluing it up. I don't have a small brush, but I'm just gonna spread it around with this pencil so it's on all sides.
I used a small hammer, but I was really afraid of hitting it too hard. I'm just thinking that would kind of crack or uh, chip the handle itself. So I'm really, really careful about that. And then just trying to remove the uh, glue squeeze out, doing that yay off camera, but uh, also just removing the tape and just... I was a bit afraid here that it would have taken off some of the wood, but it actually hadn't, so that was quite nice. So there we are. I'm just going to leave that to dry. Right, to finish it, I'm going to use this uh, chestnut finish oil. I'm just going to apply it to both uh, the gavel itself and the, the block. I was really amazed by the finishing on this wood. It really, normally finishing really turns the wood into something even more beautiful, but I think especially for this uh, blood bleach here, it really stands out all the textures in the wood. Uh, it's really nice. And it's actually from an old tree that we had to cut down uh, on the road I'm living. So there's a history behind it as well. I think that's quite nice, of kind of giving that uh, history with you in the present that you are, you're giving people. It really brings out nice color of this wood. There we go. Leave that to dry then. And that's really the finished product for you. This is the hitting block itself. Turned out really nice. There's a small on one side that I would have done love to sand better, but it really turned out nice. Also the crevice in the bottom so it doesn't wobble. And the gavel itself, I really like I was fortunate with the wood I've chosen, really, uh, the blood bleach. It gets so many nice textures from the wood itself. Uh, this is me trying out my rotating thingy. I want to see if it could actually make a nice picture of the, the thing that I'm doing. So if you like the video, please subscribe and hit the like button and see more videos around here that uh, some stuff I do.